Hello friends, welcome to another video in healthcare management strategy app built in Flutter on Firebase. In today's video, we are going to work on form with input validation. As you're looking at my screen, this is a sign-in page where user is asked to put a email ID and password. And here we want to put some reactive input validations. As the user enters email, it does the validation. As you can see, it displays an error until the error is resolved. Now, same thing with password. It is expecting an eight digit alphanumeric password so the error will keep on displaying until the error is resolved. At the same time, there's a sign-in button and you want to disable that button uh, if there is any error in any of the form fields. See? This page has a lot more functionality. So for example, it's doing the server-side validation. If the user enters a wrong email or password, it goes to the server and um, you know it comes back with the error. That part we are going to cover in next video. In this video, we are only going to focus on building a form with input data validation. So that's the objective of this video. Um, let's get it started. All right, so first thing we want to do, let's create a couple of the supporting files here under the models. Uh, let's create a new file called data model dot dot. Now in this file, we will include the data model for login and we'll come back to this later. Let me create one more file here. Inside that blocks, I want to create a, two files. Say if one is validators dot dot. Again, the idea is keep all the validations related logic inside the business logic folder. So that, you know, your, you, you know, anytime if you want to make changes, it's easy to make changes. And anytime you want to reuse that, it is easy to reuse that. So that's the reason I'm keeping all the, you know, logics inside that blocks folder. Now sign up page. Uh, again, my sign up page, I'm expecting two fields, email and password. So first thing I want to do for these two fields, let's create a data model so again data model dot dot here what i want to do here uh, i want to create a class for login data model login data model and in this class i want to include two different fields first is uh, email and again is this, uh, this email is of type string same thing with password password and again i want to initialize that with a default constructor login data model and inside that i'm going to initialize that this dot email and this dot password. This dot email, this dot password. As you can see, it's still giving me some error. Okay, because it's not okay, it's not allowing the null. Again, my I, I expect, you know, for this model, I want my users to intentionally put an email and password, so I'm going to make this a required. So required, this dot email and required this dot password. Okay, save this. So now I have a data model which will be used to capture and validate uh, the login related data. Okay, email and password. Let me fix that, let me put the required again. Quick fix required. Okay, save this. Now let's go to sign up page. Um, no, sorry, let's go to validator page. So now here I want to write some generic validation. Again, idea is to keep building the code in such a way that it can be reused. So validations, so first, for example, I want to create a default validation for email. So let me import uh, a couple of async packages, first of all, because you know all of this, uh, this thing will be done asynchronously. Okay, dot async. You will see the blue linting hint because it's suggesting that you are not still using it. Let me now, uh, this error will go away once, this warning will go away. Let's go create a class validators. And here I want to first, uh, there are different ways to create validation. So I'm just going to show you one simple way. So for example, I'm saying, you know, let's evaluate email. So eval, uh, eval care, and then it expects a parameter here. So for example, it says, you know, a string, uh, it, it takes a parameter of type str, str of type a string. And here you can simply say, okay, if this uh, str is, is blank or is, if there's nothing out there, you want to throw an error. So here, uh, if a statement, if it says str.length is less than equals to four, then you want to complain, hey, you know what, this, uh, whatever uh, the values you are entering is less than four characters. So here you just want to say return and this will return this statement, uh, a string statement. It will say number of cards are less than four. So this is one simple tie of like, you know, uh, validations you can build. Okay. Okay. You can't return null because, you know, it's uh, you, this function is of type string. So you can say, you know what, I'll go to whatever. Okay. 
All right. So similarly, uh, this is the generic you know function you wrote, and it's it works for any character. But similarly, the idea is the same. You want to create all your uh, validations uh, kind of uh, validation kind of functions here. So let's go validate the email. Now email is a little bit like you know strange because you know you expect your users to enter um, an email, a valid email, and to the way to check that email is through regex string. So for example, any typical email is must have a dot and must and must have an at at symbol. So you want to validate those things here. I'm going to write another function say string is valid email. It takes a email value here. And here I want to define a pattern. So the way to check that kind of uh, uh, that you know that your string has that match matching uh, add sign or matching dot sign to do that is using a regex pattern. So what you can do? Let me create a new variable here, saying final regex p, and then regex equals to new regex, and inside that you want to uh, pass the regex regular expression string and I'm just going to copy paste because I know that this regex I copied from Google this regex has the, all the validations for email okay and next thing you want to do very simply you call has match function so dot has an um, a, a inbuilt function which says has match so for example say regex dot has match and then you want to put an email value here whatever the input is passed into that string. Let's change this to input. Input is still giving me an error because it's a Boolean. Because, you know, as much it tells you yes or no. Um, so here, let me change this to Boolean. That's one way to fix it. Okay, Boolean, and it will tell you yes or no. So if it returns true, that means like it has a match. If it, it doesn't have that, that means it's, in, it's an invalid email. So this is kind of like, you know, here it's not throwing a message, but it's, it's a Boolean function. It tells you that form is the email value entered is, is an valid email or not. Okay, so let me, you know, some more, one more sample I want to show you how to create, how to write those um, validation function. So same thing with is valid password. Same thing, it, is, it takes an input. And you want to, you know, for example, in your password, you want to have a regex pattern defined. Uh, suppose you want to force a rule in your password that it should have at least one alphanumeric uh, field. And it has to be less than, you know, it has to be more than eight characters. So you can write those kind of generic functions here. And, uh, you know, and you can re reuse those things uh, over and over again, everywhere the password field is used inside your application. Same thing, I'm going to create a new regex. And this is the pattern again i'm going to copy that you know pattern from uh, from because you know you can find different type of regular expression pattern just google it and you will end you know there are patterns related to the email patterns related to the password any any other field or uh, phone numbers you know so you can just copy post this thing copy paste those things from the from google okay let me just Okay, same thing, I can use has match, but you know, let me, because you know, let me wrap this inside an if and else block, because I want to say, if I, if you want to display the message to the user, it can't be a Boolean. So, you know, you say if input dot regex is, you know, is, first of all, it's an empty, you, you should enter an, a, a, a something out there. Otherwise, you know, you should throw an error that please enter a new value. And once the error is entered, then you can, uh, you know, do the same validations over there. Okay, so for example, Okay, because you are returning a string, it cannot be of type Boolean. Please pay attention to the type of the functions you are writing. Okay, so in first function you saw, it was returning a yes or no, a true or false, so it was a Boolean. This time I'm returning a string, so that's why it is of type string. Actually, I want to do another um, validation here. So if uh, it, it was an empty and you throw an error, that enters some value. Now you want to like, you know, do the regex validation. So let me do an else if here. I'll save and I'm going to include the regex dot has match statement here. Okay. And then I'll throw it an error. If the regex doesn't match, that please enter some alphanumeric characters. Check self is. Okay.
Right, he's still complaining about the pattern. He's saying can't be okay. So it could be any because he's expecting a string. So it could be pattern dot two string will fix it. Or what you can do is just copy paste that whole thing and pass this. You don't need to a separate variable for that. So either way, I think either way will work. I just pass that you know get rid of that extra string. Just pass that regular expression inside that uh, regex expression as a full parameter. Okay, let me save this and make sure there's there are no more errors there anywhere. And at last, it I just want to create a final, uh, say, validator block. And the reason I want to do that, because anywhere I include this validator dot dot, I just need to access this variable and it will bring the entire class here. So that's the, you know, you can consider the last statement as an export statement. So I think most of the files looks good now and we are ready to write some validations Odd dot block dot dot. I think we'll come back to this later when we'll write the business logic. Uh, Let's compile and serve this application one more time just to check that you are not seeing any error anywhere. Okay, now let's go st start working on the login. Let's let's start with the login page first. Okay, because that's um, our entry uh, entry page here. So inside that login, I'm going to again. Uh, let me just change this to a stateful widget because I I I will need to manage my state. So I'm going to create a stateful visit let me get rid of all the login uh, stateless visit what we created earlier okay uh, one more thing to keep in mind that you will be you know you want this login page to be accessible through other parts so remember we created the routes so let's go to app dot dot uh, the route and this is like you know let's slowly start uh, start uncommenting that so i'm going to uncomment that login part here it will right now it will give you an error because it doesn't understand what route name is so now let's make sure the first thing you want to you know uh, define a variable say static constant and you want to say route name and you want to give it a name login so this is how your application know where to find login page all right so now since we covered it next thing we want to do here let's go to the login page and cre start creating a couple of more variables what you will need Another thing you will need is uh, the form key because it's going to be a form and the way to include the form in your Flutter uh, uh, Flutter app is actually uh, is a, again a widget. So, you know, you create a final variable form key and global key equals to form state. Uh, again, I'm going to import the data model what we created earlier, login data model. Uh, see, this is data model is the essential very, you know, part of this application. A lot of people tend to avoid data model. But, you know, trust me, if you define your data model accurately, it makes your life so much easy. Okay, right now it's giving you an error because we haven't included, uh, we haven't imported the package yet. Let me just finish off creating a couple of more variables here and then, then we'll come back. So I included a button and let me include a couple of text editing controller. Again, you can find all this documentation to Flutter website, but this text controller, what it does, it lets you manage your text form widgets as a stream controller. Again, we'll see the function, see the functionality in action. It will make a lot more sense. Uh, right now, let's fix this error. So let's go, you know, say import this data model. HMS app, models, data model, and hopefully that will fix this error. No, not yet, it's still okay. Because we made, okay, now because we remember we in login data model, we had this email and password required. So that's why he's expecting that. So see that login data model and here these two fields are required. So one way to solve this is you can always initialize this here. So you just say, you know, this dot email equals to pass some blank value there. That's one way to fix that. Okay. And uh, let's include two more functions in it is state. So it's always again, whenever you're working with any stateful visits, there are two functions you always want to, you know, um, initialize. One is the init state. All you need to do wide init state inside that init state, you just say super dot init state. So anytime, you know, um, you include these two functions. Second function, you know, whenever you are working with the text, any, any editing stream controller, please always dispose them. Otherwise, you know, you don't want to keep that open. Streaming are observables. So once you, uh, you know, once you are done with this, uh, once this page is off displayed, the always is a good idea to dispose um, any streaming controller which are in active state. Uh, whether they are active or not, you, you just need to dispose that anyway. It's a good practice to dispose that. So let's get rid of this text, not get rid of that. Let's wrap this around and material. So uh, I'm going to 
create a material inside material i'm going to create a container and let's wrap this you know let's give the container an edge so that we have margins from other side so that you know this text i want this this whole form uh, to appear in middle of the screen and then let's just me just uh, i'm going to create that form in a minute let me just include the text here text Uh, ideally what we want like you know if the user is already logged in we want the users to see settings page if the user is not logged in the user should see the login page again we'll see how to achieve that functionality in next video but for now let's just keep things very simple that we say okay this is the login page and if the user is logged in you should see the settings page because the user is already authenticated so let's go start working on our business logic first so i'm going to um, head out to our dot blog dot dot file here this is where again i'm going to create all my business logic so in this block first thing i want to do i want to you know, you know always import the async packages because all of this validations will be asynchronous so here i'm going to say final auth block again i'm going to initialize this class here auth block so that i can call it anywhere in my application i'm going to create a class here class auth block okay and here this is the tricky part like you know you want validations to be included in this auth block so you, you the way to do that in flutter is you extend dash to objects with validators so i'm just going to say class auth block extends objects with validator and it's uh, as you can see it imported the validations here so this is how you connect the whole pieces together Let's create a dummy functions is signed in and you know all i all i want this function to do return true or false and we'll we'll worry about the logic later but for now let's say if the user is signed in it returns true so now let's go start calling this function head out to your login dot dot and here i want to bring that class in so auth block is of type auth block and i'm going to say auth block so this is the way i just like initialize i bring that class in here auth block now let's go to my child um widget where the text is displayed and here i want to write a simple if and else statement i'm going to use the unary operator way of doing it and i want to say auth block dot is signed in then do this if not then do this so unary operator means it's a shorthand way of writing if else else statement so again auth block dot is signed in then show the settings page and if not uh, then show the login page here let's just copy paste this whole statement paste it there and we'll just uh, change the text copy okay let's review this logic one more time awesome okay so now um, we have our text displays accordingly if the user is signed in or not but in reality what do you want so instead of you you know showing the simple text in reality we want to show the live visits so let's go you know change this and create some widgets here so i'm just going to say if the user is signed in let's create it will go to settings page again i will create this widget in a minute but let's go let's, go, let's just say settings page and you path that auth block um what you just created the instance of that object auth block you created and let's go create one more widget say user form and you are going to pass the same auth block to the user form let's create that widget settings page and it takes an auth block uh, uh, object instance here is of type widget I'll just return some random text here let's copy paste this because we want two different widgets one is for settings other is for user form don't worry about what's inside that i want first of all i want to fix this to error so that my error is compiled okay so let me just copy paste user form copy paste all right so errors are gone now okay so now let's go create some styling so inside the settings page okay i'm just going to you know get up you know let's create a column here so inside that column you want to display some nice uh, fancy text here again these are the static things text styling thing you can put whatever you want i'm just going to you know include some um not a random say this is an hms app and then uh, you want to give it a style okay see no text so size box will just create some extra space between two visits here give this some width and height it's still complaining about cnet text i think i the reason is complaining because i have not imported uh, the custom style file here let me just import it import 
HMS app, custom style. Okay, looks great. So error should be gone now. Okay. So after the size box, actually what I want to do, I want to create a button, a logout button. So if a user clicks on that button, it should, uh, um, it should log out. So let's go create an elevated button here. Elevated button, elevated. So once you create the elevated button, it expects you two things. The label, so I'm just going to put a text, say log out, on press. So when uh, I click on that on press button, I want a function to be called, which is log out. So this on press equals to log out. And I'm going to pause that auth block object instance, what we just created. So log out right now it doesn't exist so that's why it's complaining about let's go create that so again in the same file i want you to create a function called log out so again this this log out again is going to be an asynchronous so i'm just going to mark this as future future log out asynchronous and inside this log out function again i want to call it auth block ideally i would not have used it here i just would have called auth block itself but let's just just go with this and we'll fix this later so future Okay, async. Now here inside this, I just want to say auth block dot logout. Return auth block dot logout. Again, the logout doesn't exist on auth block. Uh, that's what I meant. Like we should have directly reached out to auth block itself instead of writing logout code here. But we can we can do that later. Let's just go save this. It still has this error because logout is not defined. Let's go to our odd.blog.logout here. You call this function, say logout. Okay, now logout. And the reason I'm, I want to do it here because everything, all the Firebase or your backend related information are stored here. So again, it's complaining about it's still giving me this error because right now this is, a, okay, it's, it's not expecting a, a future here. Again, don't worry about this future and asynchronous. Once you start writing the Firebase related code here, uh, we will fix this again. So right now, let's just keep it simple. Create a simple function called logout. If I click on these things, it goes to the logout and it does something. Okay, because in this uh, in this uh, video, our objective is to work on uh, form validations only. All right. So this looks pretty good now. Next thing I want to do here, I want to copy paste the whole thing. After the logout, I want to create another button. Say, you know, so you have users, I want to give two choices to the user. One, either user goes to the logout page or the user goes to the settings page. So let's just go create another button. Same thing, copy paste and just say go to settings. Obviously, I don't want, you know, get rid of this function here, logout. And here I want to do here, I want to say, you know, navigator.post because the user, either user can click on the logout or user can go to the uh, settings page here. So again, recall that, you know, this is, uh, so now let's go see that settings dot dot what we have created and we have defined a route name here. So now that's how you connect the whole application. So here the user will be uh, able to go to their settings page. Let's go to user form widget now and here is user form, start with the form visit. So again, go through the documentation what form visit is all about and uh, in form visit, it expects a key. So remember like, you know, in beginning of we created a key called form key. So let me create a, you know, uh, get rid of this. No, sorry. Uh, let me just move it over. Okay. Now let's go start with the key and then auto validation. Okay. Form key. No, actually I should say key is of type form key and then auto validations. Validations. And I want to say uh, always auto validate. Auto validate is deprecated. Okay. Let's go auto validation dot always now let's uh, write some logic on the action item on change so in on change what i want to do i created a variable earlier called button enabled so what i want to do here let's call the set state because set state will force the visit to uh, you know rebuild if there is any changes so inside the set state i want to uh, use this uh, field say which is this variable button enabled what we created so button enabled what it will do form key dot current state dot validate if the form is valid the button enabled will be true if the form is invalid, invalid, so the button enabled will remain the false. And the trick is we'll create a submit button later on and we'll tie up this button enabled default behavior to that submit button. Great. Now, since uh, we have defined all the form uh, default behavior and uh, structure, uh, now it's time to start building our real forms. 
So inside that child, this is the child, the body of this uh, this widget where we'll include all the form elements. So let me just create some couple of uh, say center and then uh, sorry column and center, and let me just include couple of default text fields here. Okay. After the sign in button, let's go create a container. Inside the container, I'm going to include all my text form fields. Let me give it a margin so that it should look nice. And now inside that, let me create a child. And this is the child. I will, I'm going to include the text form field widget. Again, as you can see, this is the widget. And if you mouse over this, you will see all the plenty of the option so that you can customize this as per your requirement. All right. Let's include a controller and controller is of type text editing controller. If you recall earlier in the file, we created two different controller, text editing controller, uh, the email controller and password. So here, let's go controller, include that email controller, uh, include a couple of other um, decorations kind of stuff like cursor color or keyboard type. Keyboard type is like you know, if you open your application on your mobile phone, you want your email specific keyboard to appear. Same thing, max length and obscure text is, for example, false. That means like it's not going to encrypt. So remember, like, you know, if you in the, in the fields like password, um, you want to encrypt as a user types the text. So then that's where you want to give it as true. So here I'm just going to include a false and then let's me include a couple of other decorations, input decoration. And these are just fancy steps. So you want to give it an icon or maybe text, default text, put a star, things like that. Just all the user friendly options you want to include. Um, so that user um, user knows what to put it in that text editing form field. All right. Now here the fun part is like on change. What do you want to do as soon as the value is changed? You want to capture that value and put it into model.email. Now what is model? So if you recall, you, we just created a data model, and data model is the place it captures and it stores the value of the form. So that's why I'm saying model dot email is equal to value so as soon as the user enters anything on change event is going to take that value and store it inside that model so that's how you you, you store the data inside the data model now let's go create some validator same fundamentals so as soon as you enter the user enter any value you want to validate that so take that value pass it to a function called eval email right now it doesn't understand what eval email is so let's go recall that validator dot dot file let's go um, create that method. I believe we created other methods. So let me copy. It's going to look very, very same uh, method. So let me just create one. Say eval email and it takes an input and what it does, it does the validation. First thing is want to do that. Okay, if the value is empty, then you want to display an error. And then if uh, the value is uh, not empty, then you want to figure it out. The value is, uh, you have to uh, define the regex. That means the regex is the email pattern you want to user to input. So you want to figure out the match. If that, it doesn't match, then you want to throw an error that this is not an email, valid email. All right. One thing you will notice that if you mark a string in front of that, then this method expect to return a string, which you do not want. So it's not a good idea. That's why I got rid of the string. If you put a string in front of the function, that means function is expected to return um, a string. So let's go. I think this function looks good now. Let me just save this. Let's go back to login dot dot. Error should disappear now. So I think this looks pretty good now. Now it's time to test our function and um, form here. So I'm going to hit R. That means refresh on my terminal window. So as you can see, let me refresh it one more time. So here, let's go try uh, test this functionality. So if you if you see if you put any email without an at or dot or you know com, it understands that this is not a valid email. So it's going to give you an error. Let me. Run one more test here. See, so it so as the user types, it does a validation. That's the reactive uh, validation you want to achieve in your application. So now my email validation is working. Now it's the easy part. All I need to do, just copy the entire thing and paste it over again. Because after the email, I want to include a password field. So let's go start making changes. So as you can see, I'm going to change this to uh, model dot. So let, let's change the controller, say password controller. Okay, and I want to give, uh, fix the obscure text, fix the text, uh, hint text. Okay, let me just start making those changes here. Password, obscure text, because I want, this time is true. Okay, I'm missing a comma, I believe. Yeah, so that fixes this error. Let me save this. Right now, it doesn't understand what eval password is. So similarly, like eval email, I want to include a new function called eval password. So similar to this, I could have used the same function, but let me just write it over there. Eval password. Same thing. So 
So I believe what's happening here that it's uh, um, evil password. Why it's giving error? Because it's expecting an a string. Okay, now that I, I yeah, so I need to get rid of the string. Now it looks good. Evil password. Let me change that um, the icon there. Let me refresh it and let's just, let's test test this out. Okay. So I'm putting a valid password, but still the error is not gone. Okay, I think I, uh, at the end of the function, if everything is all good, I want to return a null. If I keep uh, returning a value, it's going to keep showing the error. So I want to return a null here. Return null. Save this. Refresh it one more time. Let's try it out. Awesome. This is the behavior actually. Yeah, hopefully this will this will work right this time. So one. Okay, let me put an email. This is the behavior I want to achieve. All right. So at the last I want to include a submit button. So same thing. Right? Well, if all the user inputs are valid, then submit button should be enabled. Otherwise it should stay disabled. Uh, it should be very simple implementation because remember like at the beginning of the form we already validated that logic if the button enabled if the form is not validated button enabled variable will be false so all we need to do here just check if button enabled equals to true then we enabled it otherwise it's not and don't worry about that we'll write this function later in next video but this video because our objective was just to uh, implement the form validation so this is good enough so i'm just going to you know change this to null for now uh, and let's just like you know, so, so the objective if any of the form element has an error, the button should uh, remain disabled. All right, so let's see. Let me put a correct email, correct password, and you will notice that button gets enabled. Great, that's all I wanted to achieve in this video. Hopefully, you like this video. If you, in case if you have any error, please feel free to go to my GitHub repository, open a new issue, and I will be happy to help you out. In next videos, we'll start working on this application and we'll connect this to our backend, which is the Firebase database. Um, so things looks pretty good now. Um, please, uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any issues, please feel free to open an issue log at the GitHub repository. Thank you very much.